Hey guys, today I'm running you through uh, some of my favorite uh, racks from the uh, Creative Tools uh, series that we're doing uh, through Tribe Dance. Um, it's a collection of, uh, of racks that is kind of meant to spark some creativity, do some creative kind of um, sound designing, um, and, and just make life in general a little bit more easy because you can control things with uh, macros and it doesn't take you a bunch of time to set up um, things that you uh, otherwise might need like 78 clicks for anyways that's that's the the idea uh, behind these um, behind these racks and I've set up uh, four racks um, that are kind of my favorite uh, at the moment that I use a lot in my productions so um, I set up this loop here Let's uh, start at the very beginning instead of in the middle. It's always a good one. A very basic loop. I created these ones uh, with uh, with our uh, West Coast House Volume Two, which I think should be out soon. Um, and uh, yeah, basic loop, but just to uh, to illustrate the uh, the ideas here. So there, there's a couple of things going on there. Um, you hear at the end, uh, I add a synth and uh, you know, it's creating a crescendo effect, but that's not only the synth, there's more stuff going on under the hood and that's being done by these uh, these racks here. So I'll show you a little bit of what's going on. Let's, let's go through the beat first for those who are interested. This is the uh, Pregger's kick with a little bit of, uh, of boosting here. So that sounds like this. A lot of saturation there. Uh, and then I grabbed a top loop from the pack and I uh, gated it a little bit. So we get that skippy kind of sound instead of this. Right, if you set it to like 50, you uh, create a gate effect, which is nice. Then an added uh, short hi-hat which is also from the kit, which is called Yonder, Over Yonder. Um, and then uh, a bass loop, skippy bass loop. Kind of, uh, you know, ghetto housey, in my opinion. And then we have a lead here that's going to be coming out uh, in the second series of, um, of the West Coast House Serum Patches. Already you see here there's a rack that we're gonna gonna talk about. Alright, so all of this stuff is not like uh how do you say that? That's why we're not pricing it like way up in the sky. I mean it's stuff that's supposed to make your life easier. It's not uh, earth adder uh, shattering stuff it's just really handy stuff though like I use it a lot in my productions and I, I think uh, a lot of times it cuts down what I'm doing uh, by a lot you know uh, because it's basically the same kind of um, progressions you go over in a lot of your uh, production especially if you want to keep sort of a same aesthetic throughout your productions it's most uh, most of the times you're doing the same stuff, so these racks can really come in handy. Okay, so um, there's a couple of things happening here. Let's let's dive into this uh, uh, this group here, and I have a, uh, a rack here called uh, Master Fil Filter XL, which is one I am using a lot because it's just so super handy. So basically, what this does is it does a, a a DJ cut it scoops out the low and I'll show you how we set this up here um, 
there's a short, medium, and long knob. That's what she said, by the way. I don't know if that's uh, if we can say that still in 2022, but I am doing it. I am putting my foot down. Short, medium, and long. That's what she said. Okay. Um, I use the medium option here because this is a medium kind of uh, increment of time. What is this? Eight bars? Eight bars. Okay. So the, you would typically use this. Uh, for instance on the master to low cut everything the cool thing here is if you automate this this is set to a specific frequency here so if we engage this if it's on zero nothing happens if we engage this we cut more low and low and we accentuate a little bit this uh, this curve like an old school filter um, with the longer one the same thing happens, but because we have a longer increment of time, we can go up slightly more here. Boom. All right, so this, this makes that crescendo moment uh, even, even bigger. All right, that's what she said. Again, um, I need to knock those jokes off. Um, then we have the reverb button here, which is kind of uh, accentuating let me go back to bum, 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 bum. go back to this one. Where's the? Oh, here we go. Okay, this is the row here, um, and this is the reverb knob uh, here, and it's routed to this one. So basically, what's happening is if we turn this on, there's reverb being added. If it's off, reverb's not added, and it's a little bit more of a dry effect, which is scooping out the um, the lows. See that? Okay, and now if we do this with, I'm just showing you this on the lead because it's a little bit more apparent. Um, if we put the reverb on, you'll get, you know, a more spacious effect. Of course, you know, be creative with this stuff. You can, uh, you can kind of uh, go nuts on the decay time. Um, I wouldn't recommend going past like 55 for the uh, for, for the dry wet there. Um, but yeah, this is just like a starting off point. If you want to mess around with these, go uh, go go ahead. Um, a lot of times, if you want to create tension in a song, let's say we have a uh, what was it? What is this? This is a 30 second loop. So what if we have Let's uh, copy this here. What if we have a, a drop of a minute? Then, for instance, what you can do here is uh, do that at the end. Go up with this one at the end. I did a quite dramatic uh, curve here, but you could do it like this. And then once you go back into uh, the uh, the normal loop for instance if you want to have a drop for like one minute 15 seconds all of a sudden this sounds fresh again you know so if we go like this right away you're you're back into something fresh um and this really helps sell the effect longer it's just you know you go up a little bit more uh, short is for those very very short increments so i would do that for instance, like this, if we delete that automation, we can go like this, and maybe we do a little bit of this in two bars. Make sure we come down to zero here. Okay, so you get the idea, right? Uh, a lot of times this is cool to create tension or whenever you get stuck in a loop where you're like, oh, I need to do something different. Try this master filter XL. Uh, this XL button, um, I'm not gonna explain it too much, but it basically puts the uh, effect on uh, on steroids, basically. So uh, there's a little bit of flanging going on, a little bit of delay, and it just extends the effect uh, a little bit more. Again, explore this stuff. This is meant to be creative, um, cr uh, create creative tools, not uh, you know mixing tools per se. 
um, you know, just go nuts on this uh, on, on this stuff. All right. That being said, let's uh, go back with the old curve here. Boom. Like that. Whoop, jumpy mouse. There we go. Delete this stuff right here. Delete that right there. And let's have a loop again. We're back to the original. I think I built a loop that was like this. So let's just be perfectly thorough there. Cool. Move on now. Let's move on to the second one. So um, one thing I do here is I uh, I use the uh, Creative Tools Dub Echo, which is a cool uh, a cool one that I use a lot as well. You'll you'll be hearing me uh, say that a lot because I do. Uh, use this stuff a lot uh, let me show you what happens when I solo this um, it's basically made out of delays but it's an effect that we use a lot of times that we you know it's, it's a little bit uh, can take a little bit of a while to set up every time that's why I created this rack so let me disengage the filter here So it adds a lot of space here. So to be perfectly fair here, let's um, uh, bypass this one as well. Okay, so basically what's happening here is uh, we're adding a delay. We're kind of doing it on time, um, but we're not really. So this creates a very, very, um, well, we're not doing it super synced. So this creates a cool effect, I think. Um, and what I would invite you to do is to have a mess around with this time parameter because you can get into all sorts of weird things if you do this, especially if you're like in a break. Let's say we uh, we just do a quick low cut here on the beat. Uh, let's grab a EQ. Yep, EQ, thank you. All right, cool. So let's keep this going here. Um, and let's say we're going to the break here. What we can do is mess around with this parameter here. Okay. Of course, we're going back to zero there. Let's not do that. Um, and it creates this sort of weird a spring reverby effect which is uh, which is very very uh, bass housey and if you get creative with this stuff and for instance you want to um, kind of you want to uh, extend that effect a little bit more maybe you would do like a delay here So now this gives you, you could let this bleed over for four bars, eight bars, and that could be your wacky little thing of going back into the drop. Anyways, we have three flavors of these. Check them out, they're all pretty cool. Uh, again, this is like a pro tip. Uh, if you wanna have like more fun with it, um, you know, uh, these parameters, automate them, um, and it'll give you some, uh, some freaky effects for sure. Um, it's a great one for, you know, when you, when you have a repetitive loop, which we have obviously in house music, um, and we, we want to do something at the end of like 30 seconds or, or a minute, uh, you know, slap this on, have a little bit of fun, and uh, you'll create something uh, entirely different from it. Alrighty, cool. Um, let's go back to 
the normal setting here, and then I kind of went like this. I set it up to 55% because I don't think you need anything more than that. But again, rules are there to be broken, so go nuts. All right, um, then let's let's go to the uh, warehouse drums, which is something I made for myself to kind of get some grit and dirt into uh, my drums. Um, and I've used them for the pack as well. Uh, just to process something. So let me let me A B this for you. Of course, let's put everything on here. Oh, we're still running the uh, low cut. Okay, so, you know it's super dirty, super saturated, super heavy. Um, now let's turn this off. All right, that's super dry. That's uh, super dirty. So, um, let me show you what's going on under the hood here. Of course, you know, uh, with, with sound design, you, you wanna go maybe a little bit more subtle on it, especially if you're doing it on a, on a whole group. Um, but this adds dirt. When, when you need some dirt, when you need some like analog-y sounding drums, this is pretty cool. This is the magic button as far as I'm concerned. Um, this makes it feel like this has been recorded in a warehouse, which is why I like that a lot. Um, this sampler dirt is, uh, is just adding a little bit of, uh, of noise on top. So imagine doing this for like a, only a hi-hat loop. Uh, it would create so much more interesting harmonics on top. Um, with, you know, with, with the low end kind of stuff, you, you gotta go a little bit more easy on it. But then again, because these are Ableton racks, you can have like 74 in your project and it won't really matter, uh, as opposed to like third-party VST kind of um, uh, solutions where you know, it can be a real strain on your uh, on your CPU. With this kind of stuff, it's just uh, less there. So, uh, yeah, the uh, warehouse effects is set up to a reverb module here, um, and it just kind of di dictates how large the space is where you uh, where you want to do this in. And interestingly, the uh, the size here, if you put that like on a, on a short or a, or a small size, it, it kind of sounds tinny and warehouse. So with, with entire loops, I would kind of go subtle on this, but uh, again, this is your playground, it's up to you. Okay, so, um, you know, use this however you, you want it. I know I've used it on kicks. Sometimes you need to um, kind of pump a little bit of uh, low back into it because the reverb tends to, uh, you know, take a little bit out. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a cool creative tool. You can, uh, you know, add some more smack, more transient, um, you know, all to transform the sound. Let's, let's uh, twist a couple of knobs here. Okay, that's super saturated here. This is like uh, a, a filter set up for the lows and the highs. Could be cool also as an effect um, at the end of, uh, of a 30 second uh, interval. And then back into it. Uh, but it creates, uh, it creates a, a different world for your drum. So again, let's AB this. Totally, totally different uh, type of vibe. So, uh, yeah, warehouse, uh, warehouse drums. Again, no rules, go, go nuts with it. Um, you know, uh, this is meant as a creative, uh, creative pack, which is why we named it Creative Tools. Um, and then there's one more I wanna show you, which is uh, not the Master Filter XL, uh, XL, it's the Builder Upper. 
for lack of a better name, I guess. But uh, uh, it's a cool effect, um, and it, you can kind of go crazy on this stuff. So if we, let me see if we got this set up in the correct way. Yeah, filter on. Okay, cool. So now we're not doing the scooping on the um, on the master filter XL. We're rather doing it on on this one. So watch what happens. Here. That's for me. I think that's really cool. I, I think you shouldn't use it in every song, but it's a cool kind of option to have. I guess this is sort of our interpretation, our kind of uh, version of uh, those one knobs kind of plugins that uh, uh, Data Life did. The Builder Upper. No, the, no, it's not the Builder Upper. This is the Builder Upper. What's what's that thing called again? I don't know. With this, not with the sausage, but the other one. Um, where you just turn the knob and then you get an effect out of this. This is this is very low uh, uh, low intensity on the um, on the CPU. Um, it's a cool effect to have and uh, it's part of uh, uh, part of the suite, which doesn't cost uh, cost the world. Um, you know, maybe this is uh, good for a breakdown. Maybe this is good uh, just to use on a synth. You know, again, the uh, emphasis is on the creative stuff, um, and you're you're meant to uh, to go nuts on this. So if we do this on, for instance, this one. You can kind of imagine how that builds uh, instant instant hype, um, and apparently I did a double here, which which sounded cool as well. This is this is what I mean with like happy accidents. Uh, but imagine doing this on a vocal uh, would be very very cool. And I have, I don't have any uh, examples to show you uh, because we don't have our vocal pack set up yet. They will be coming though. Um, but it's a very interesting way to. Um, you know, take your loop, your idea, which is, you know, if you if you got the groove down, that's like half of the song, and then extend that loop with uh, tools like these that are just meant to do these creative things and have less of a hassle setting them up. You don't have to do like 17 different, uh, you know, things and and clicks. No, it's just one or two knobs and you and you're away. That's the idea with this uh, with this bundle of racks, anyways. Um, yeah, that's all I have time for today. Yeah, let let me know uh, if you have any questions on this. Uh, you can hit me up on um, on Instagram. Um, but uh, basically, this is kind of uh, meant as a another tool in your toolbox of being creative. Uh, there's no there's no rules. I think I said that 17 times, uh, but it's just um, uh, yeah, go nuts on the, on this uh, on this stuff, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll look very uh, we'll look forward to hearing the results. Um, I'm sure some of you will uh, use this in in demos and stuff like that. Uh, I'd be psyched to hear that. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope this this was useful for, for you guys. Um, be going through some of the other ones in a different uh, little tutorial here I just don't have time for it today um, but yeah uh, thank you for your time uh, yeah if you have any questions hit me up on Instagram hit our uh, uh, hustle hustle IG up on Instagram um, and uh, and have fun with these all right guys uh, thank you very much and uh, I'll check you later